There are so many different seam finishes, types of seam finishes to choose from. It's hard to know what ones are good for what type of garment and what kind of use. So confusing. <laughs> and because we all know when you choose the wrong seam finish, it can be an absolute disaster and your entire garment will just fray in front of you. We've all had this. So in this video, let's, let's talk through the different types of seam finishes and what kind of projects and uses that they're good for so you can make better choices and perhaps experiment a little in your next seam finishings. Welcome back my sewing friends. It is lovely to have you here again today. If you are just new here, welcome. My name is Evelyn Wood and here on this channel, we do everything sewing skills to really help you create the, the garments and the projects that you want, not just like learning the skills that you need. And one of those skills, of course, is seam finishes. Now, I know you probably, you know that you have to do a seam finish and what it's for to stop fraying and because aesthetic reasons, it looks pretty on the inside too. And there are so many different types of seam finishes. Maybe you're experimenting with different types branching out your skills and trying new things. But as you get to make more and more different types of garments, you will find that you'll want to experiment and try different types of seam finishes and different fabrics require different types of seam finishes. Because I know, you know as well, you've probably had this happen. You tried one type of seam finish, you put the garment in the wash, you pulled it out and a nightmare. It is literally will just fray out in front of you if you don't use the correct seam finishes for the one is the type of fabric plays a part and then two the actual garment and the garment use which also comes into the care of the garment as well. So they're the main factors that we look at when we're choosing types of seam finishes. Let's go through our list of seam finishes, the different types, and we'll talk about what kind of uses that they're good for, what they're not good for, so you can Get better at choosing different types of seam finishes for your next project, because I hope that you'll try something different. So let's start with some of the easiest uh, seam finishes and work our way up to some of the harder ones. First one is a pinking sheer edge or a pinked edge. What this is, is you've probably seen those scissors with the zigzag edges. And basically you cut your fabric with these zigzag scissors and you get this little zigzagged edge, a pinked edge. How this works is because the fabric is cut in all these zigs, it can only fray through the top of these triangle parts and it can't fray down any further. Trust me, it does work, but not for everything, of course. This type of seam finish is uh, quite a vintage type. You'll see it in many garments pre-overlockers. It's generally one of the most used. So what is this seam finish good for? Well, it's good for recreating a vintage look. If you want a really authentic feel inside and out, a pinked edge will give you that. It is very easy. You can actually cut out your fabric, uh, cut out your like patterns with the pinking sheer edge and you do your seam finish at the same time as you cut your uh, fabric out. That's quite a time saver. It can be really good for sheer and light fabrics because you don't have anything um, obvious when you see through the first layer of fabric, you'll only see a nice little zigzag um, edge to it that actually looks quite nice. And so what is it not good for? Well, this is definitely not good for loose weave fabrics. So if your fabric is really prone to, to fraying very easily and it's a loose weave, you can tell by it, the, the fraying is just crazy, it will not be uh, a heavy duty enough seam finish at all. It's not good for garments that you want to machine wash. It's really a hand wash only type of seam finish. It's very light and delicate. And so it should really only be hand washed and for items that are only going to be washed a little as well, not very often. The next seam finish on our list is the zigzag edge or overcast edge. I'm going to put them in the same box because they're very similar types of finish. And this is what you'll choose generally if you don't have an overlocker or a serger. So your zigzag finish is just the zigzag function on your straight sewing machine. And it just does a zig and a zag. You can either do it in your fabric or you can actually do it over the edge as well and sort of encases uh, the, the raw edges of the fabric to stop the fraying. And your overcast stitch just adds an extra sort of uh, semi-surged mock look with the straight stitch at the same time. And it can look a little bit uh, nicer, at least I think anyway. 
And so what is this good for? This is fantastic when you don't have a serger or an overlocker and you need something quite heavy duty, but quite easy to do. And just sort of your average, like all in one, do all seam finish. Your zigzag is a great go-to in lieu of your serger or overlocker. It is also really great to use uh, for knitwear because it stretches as well. So it can um, be very, very useful for finishing your edges on your knit fabrics. And you can also have stretch zigzags as well that kind of do little stitches along the zigzag as well so that it really holds the fabric flat. So there are many options there. All in all, this is a good all-rounder seam finish. It can be machine washed, it's heavy duty, it uh, spend your time doing a few little extra uh, trimming of fabric and overcast stitches, etc. And it can look really quite nice as well. But what is it not good for? Well, often it's not good if you want to on open seams. I don't, different machines are different, but often single layer does not want to zigzag stitch very well. Um, it can happen quite frequently on machines. So sometimes single layer open seams, it's not really great. It's also not really great sometimes if you want to, um, it can just be really messy sometimes and not look as professional as you might like. It depends on your personal aesthetics, uh, but it can just look a little bit sort of homemade um, and a little bit less professional depending on what you're making. So, you know, sometimes as again, that's only really aesthetics and a personal opinion though. And you might find really bulky fabrics don't uh, zigzag very well either um, because it just ends up being really, really sort of bulky and thick. And again, a really super loose weave fabric, really loose weave, it might not be good for as well. And sometimes sheer fabrics as well, really, really lightweight, it, your machine might not like to zigzag those either. So it can be a little bit temperamental when you sort of go thicker fabrics, finer fabrics, but as most things are, it's always more difficult when you go to either end of the scale on the fabric width, but bear in mind those, otherwise it's a good all in all seam finish to use for most things. Now I know we're all familiar with this one and that is your overlocker or your surged seam finish. And yes, these are the same thing. <laughs> so your overlocker or serger, you're, you're familiar with this. It is the um, overlocked edge that's in about 95%, 99% of garments that we actually buy in the store, you will find a um, overlocked seam finish. Now, this is really great because it is the most professional looking, or at least the most what we're used to seeing in garments. You can do it open, you can do it close, you can, it's, what is it really good for? Is it's good for multi-purpose, everything. You can do open seams, closed seams. It's great for knitwear because you can actually sew your straight seam at the same time, like your actual seam and your seam finish all in one with a four thread function. So it's quite good on knitwear for that. It is also good for, well, pretty much everything. It's good for speeding up the time in your process, your sewing process as well, because it is a separate machine. You can have that set up and you can just do your seam finishes, come back to your straight sewing machine, do all your straight sewing, come back to sew, do your seam finishes. No like messing around with different dials and settings back and forth and changing your machine. You have two separate machines for the two different jobs and it can make your sewing quite quick and easy. The only downside is of course, that you have to have an actual separate machine and is not always uh, feasible for all of us uh, to have that separate machine. But that's probably the only real biggest downfall of it. Let's look at a good, another old fashioned seam finish, a turn and stitch. So this one is where you simply uh, fold over the raw edges. You sew your seam as normal, fold over the raw edges and actually just stitch them under and stitch it down. So you end up with two rows of stitching and your raw edges are turned under. Now you can actually incorporate this with the pinking sheer edge so you can pink it and then turn it under and stitch it as well. So. This one again is a little bit more of an old fashioned, a vintage type of seam finish pre overlocker, but is a great choice if you don't have an overlocker or serger. This one is really good for most types of garments. Again, it's really only on the uh, either end of the spectrum, very sheer and lightweight fabrics. You can sort of see it turned over and you'll still see through and it can look a bit messy. There's probably other choices you'll want to use for that type of thing. Uh, and again, super bulky fabrics, turning it over and stitching just adds a lot of bulk because you're doubling the layers. So it might not be appropriate for things like that, but this is a great seam finish that you can use. Uh, different areas for different things. You can still machine wash this one. 
Although because you still have those raw edges sort of exposed, you wouldn't, I would use a delicate cycle only for this one. Now we get into some of the a little bit more complicated type of seam finishes. Our felled or um, hand felled or machine felled uh, seam. So what is this exactly? So you can do a felled machine either by machine. It's usually called a flat felled uh, seam. <laughs> and it is where you actually see the top stitching on the right side of the garment. If you look at any pair of jeans and men's shirts in particular, they're all seamed with this type of finish. So um, in, the raw edges are all encased in the seam and it's stitched down nice and tight. Now you can do the same thing and do a hand finish in which from the outside it's actually invisible. You don't see any of um, the stitching at all, but on the underside the construction is the same, but instead of a machine stitch to finish, you hand stitch it and you get that nice invisible finish. And so what is this one good for? Well, I think this one is one of the most versatile seam finishes if you want to go to the higher end scale. So that's my personal choice anyways, to do hand felt as well, rather than a machine one, I like to do hand felt. But it's really good for pretty much most fabrics where you want, you don't want sort of visible overlocking or zigzag, you want it all neat and tucked in and really sort of high end looking, a felt seam is perfect. So it's constructed by um, trimming off one, like you sew your seam as normal, so you get to fit as you go still, and everything is as normal as opposed to the French seam, which we'll have coming up. I prefer a felled seam usually because it's a bit easier to manage. So you can sew right sides together as you normally do, fit everything, tweak, adjust, and then do your seam finish as normal. So you actually trim one of the layers as well, so it can be less bulky than a French seam because you have one less layer also. And I like that it's nice and visible, everything's tucked in, it's really, really nice. What is it not good for? Well, again, usually either end, but generally lightweight and sheer fabrics, this will be a perfect finish to do. Probably not machine finish, but a hand finish will be exceptional. It'll be delightful on those light and sheer fabrics. But again, anything really bulky, you might find because you're folding it over a lot that it's just too bulky. A seam finish for those really thick wool fabrics or things like that. And then of course we have the French seam. So it is similar uh, in that your raw edges are all encased in the fabric itself. Uh, and so this one, um, you probably know, you sew uh, wrong sides together, trim it down, then turn right sides together and then sew it. And then you end up with the little flap here that the raw edges are actually inside there because you have a seam on this outside here that actually encases all of those raw edges. So what is this one good for? It is great for sheer and fine fabrics because you don't have any messy uh, overlocking stitches or zigzag stitches that look messy on a sheer garment where you see through and see that. It's so lovely for those. It's because you have many layers, it doesn't really matter with sheer fabrics and you can get a really tight, nice, narrow seam as well. And it's really lovely. What is it not good for? Generally bulky fabrics, because as you can imagine, there's four different layers in this seam and it just will not work with anything, even a medium to heavyweight, no good. So different seam choices for those types of fabrics. This one doesn't matter, loose weave, tight weave, because your raw edges are all encased, it is great and machine washable, heavy duty as much as you like because all of those raw edges are encased in the seam. But it can be really hard, the French seams, to navigate because you have to go the opposite. You actually sew wrong, wrong sides together first and then trim it down. And then you sew again to get your actual stitch line. So you can't fit as you go because it's just not possible. You often, as we all do trying these, you instinctly sew right sides together and then have to undo it and redo it. And that's some of the reasons why I like a, a felled seam as well. It's just easier to put into my routine, but French seams are absolutely beautiful. And a little tip, I hear that in France, they're actually called English seams, which I find so amusing. <laughs> Let's take a look at bound seams or sometimes called Hong Kong binding or bound seams. So what these are is you actually have a separate piece of binding. So whether it's binding that you've bias strips that you've made yourself into um, binding or you have pre-made bias binding and you'll actually encase the raw edges in the binding uh, that you've got there. And so it, you can do open or closed and it works great for either. What is this good for? This is really great for thicker fabrics 
um, because you kind of you don't actually have to fold over the thick fabric it on itself you can just encase it in a lighter weight uh, binding and cover it it is really great for loose weave fabrics because you're actually covering those raw edges and it just really can't fray out so loose weave fabrics are really great for this it's nice on thick and sturdy fabrics because it just gives that sturdiness that a bit more structure to woolen garments and it's really really great for things like unlined jackets and coats where you actually see the inside and if it's not lined you want something really really pretty that almost looks decorative in itself and that is definitely a bound seam for those types of things and now what is it not good for so it might not be good for fine fabrics because you'll find trying to bind over a fine fabric the binding will be stiffer They're like the seam finish here will be stiffer and thicker than your actual fabric and it just will not look very good it just won't work it won't fall right it just won't work so it on the other end if your seam binding here your binding does add thickness of course and sometimes depending on what you're doing it is just too thick and bulky maybe it's making it too thick and so it can't work again again it's always on those like either end really lightweight really heavyweight they always have their troubles but uh, otherwise generally you probably wouldn't go to all this effort for just an everyday kind of uh wear because it's a lot of extra work to have to bind every single seam and so you might choose other seam finishes for more of an everyday finish but use this one for more of those special occasion something really special something where you see the inside of the garment a lot that like a jacket that might actually open up and see it and use it in a decorative way as well and of course we have all the different types of tutorials and everything in vintage sewing school this is what i do there if you're interested to really learn how to implement these new uh, skills that you have or new knowledge in seam finishes uh, i've left links down below to come and join me there so did you know that there are so many different types of uses I think for fun on this video why not leave us down below uh, what what has been the worst experience the faux pas if you will the mistakes that you made in doing a seam finishes just for a bit of fun so we can all laugh at those terrible mistakes that we thought were really good at the time and it just turned out awful so leave those comments down below I think it is really fun and it's always great learning to learn from all of our own mistakes because we've all put something in the wash and it's sprayed out read those comments down below as well for extra juicy info. Thank you so much for watching and until next time my sewing friends, bye.